Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends So we have reached the last unit of the macroeconomics course and the unit's name is behavioral foundations the topic of the first lecture of this unit is investments let us have a look as to what we will be discussing in today's lecture the first thing that we will understand in today's lecture is the meaning of investment thereafter we will be learning about what are the various types of investments and then we will understand the determinants of all these types of investments that is business fixed investment residential investments and inventory investments so coming on to the meaning of investment friends we have been discussing till now that how equilibrium in a short run is established in the economy and how the problem of employ unemployment takes place or how the problem of producing less than the required level of output takes place and what the various economists have to say about that how this disequilibrium be corrected we have also understood that the level of national income and employment in short run depends upon the aggregate demand and what is aggregate demand if we are talking about a two sector economy it aggregate demand is composed of consumption and investment we have also understood that consumption function in short run is relatively stable so essentially it means that it is the investment which plays a major role in determining the short run equilibrium and that is what has been said by keynes also before moving on to the types of investment learners it is very important for us to understand that what type of investment or when we are referring to investment what exactly are we talking about generally what happens is that when we talk about investment or when we hear the word investment we generally think about investment which people make for example when they are buying shares when they are buying mutual funds so they say they have made investment but when we are talking about investment in context of macroeconomics we are not referring to this financial investment which is investment being made in let us say shares or mutual funds or any type of investment which is exchanging hands just like you know from one person to another so this type of financial investment which is only talking about making you know buying shares or debentures or buying mutual funds is different from the type of investment which we will be talking about which is essentially real investment so when we say investment there all we will be referring to the investment that is being made for the addition of physical stock of capital for example for buying machineries so the definition of don bursch explains the real investment which we are going to talk about so what does don bursch says he says investment is the flow of spending that adds to the physical stock of capital so any type of spending which is being done in order to add to the physical stock of capital what is physical stock of capital any investment any spending which is being done to buy any capital assets like machinery that we are referring to investment so i hope now you are very well aware that how financial investment is different from real investment i will again repeat it for you financial investment is basically spending money in buying shares debentures or mutual funds where there is only exchange of hands taking place whereas the investment which we are referring to is real investment which is addition to the physical stock of capital real investment is more important 
from the point of view of macroeconomics is because this is the investment which will raise the level of aggregate demand and thereby raise the level of income and employment in the economy. So investment which we are referring to is the real investment because it is increasing the level of aggregate demand and hence increasing or changing the level of income and employment in the economy. Now once we have understood the meaning of investment, now let us have a look at what are the various types of investments. We will be talking about three types of investments and the distinction must be drawn between all the three types. The first investment which we will be referring to is the business fixed investment. Then we will be referring to residential investment and then we will be going to the inventory investment. So these are the three essential types of investment, real investments which we are going to talk about. Business fixed investment, residential investment and inventory investment. Now let us understand all of these one by one. We will start our like this with business fixed investment. Business fixed investment is basically any type of spending which has been done or any type of investment which has been done in the equipment and the structures that businesses are buying so that they can be used in the production. So if a business firm is buying any type of machinery or any type of equipment or any kind of a structure which will help them to increase their production or which will be adding to the production process is defined as your business fixed investment. Now this business fixed investment is a very important component of aggregate demand because it is going to add to your production process which is going to increase the level of the output in your economy and this is the investment if this investment is made then only we will see an increase in the level of employment of the manpower which is available in the economy. So when we are talking about aggregate demand which was equal to C plus I in case of a two sector economy, the I which we talked about is composed of one, the business fixed investment which we are currently talking about and second, the investry, inventory investment which we will be dealing on later on in this lecture. So this I which we have already said is important because in short run, this I, the change in this I will eventually change the aggregate demand and Keynes has put a focus on this investment level. So we will be, uh, you know, it's a very important concept therefore. Also it is important because this is the most volatile component of aggregate demand and Keynes has viewed it as a reason for the business cycles. Any economic fluctuation according to Keynes takes place because the level of this particular investment changes. Volatile means that it changes very fast unlike the consumption function which is relatively stable. So this component of aggregate demand as we've just said is important not only because it is comprising in the aggregate demand but also it is very volatile. So any change in this investment leads to ups and downs in the economic activity. So Keynes has said that the business cycles or the economic fluctuations which take place are essentially due to the change in the investments which changes the aggregate demand. Now it is important for us to understand that what are the factors which lead to change in this business fixed capital or in other words what are the determinants of the business fixed capital. In order to understand this the standard model which is used is the new classical model of investment which explains the determinants or the factors which put an impact on the amount of business fixed capital. According to them 
the business fixed capital is determined by these three things one is the marginal product of capital second is the user cost of capital and third are the tax rules let us understand all these three one by one i again repeat what does the new classical model of investment say this model of investment is explaining that the what are the various factors that determine how much fixed capital by business will take place according to them three things are most important in determining this business fixed capital one is the marginal product of capital second is the user cost of capital and third are the tax rules now let us understand what do we mean by marginal product of capital this concept of marginal product you have already done in your microeconomics what does marginal product of capital mean it means what is the addition to your total product because we are using additional units of capital why it is important determinant of business fixed capital learners is because any businessman will first try to see that if my labor and technology are constant if i am only increasing my capital what extra product will it add by changing my capital so marginal product of capital is basically measuring how much extra output will i gain if i increase my level of capital of course keeping your labor and technology constant we also know that the diminishing returns to capital will set in hence by just increasing your capital does not mean my output will increase in the similar manner initially by adding more capital we will see an addition a high addition to your total output then it the diminishing returns will come in and then eventually we will see a declining return to this capital therefore this means that the business will not keep on adding capital indiscriminately they will see to what level we will see a addition to the total product by adding capital so the first determinant of business fixed capital hence is the marginal product of capital second determinant of your business fixed capital is the user cost of capital in other words what is the cost of getting this capital into business if i have decided seeing my marginal product of capital that i should increase my fixed capital there is going to be some cost associated with this capital according to the neo classical thought the user cost of capital depends on of course what is the interest which i have to pay if i am going to invest this money so one is your investment interest rates second they would also like to understand that what is the cost itself of the machinery which i am buying so that is the second determinant of your cost of capital and third what is the depreciation rate of the capital with the machinery or the capital asset which i am buying what is depreciation depreciation is the see whenever we are using any capital asset over a period of time there will be a wear and tear of that asset that wear and tear of asset the rate at which this asset is you know uh, losing its value because of obsolescence that rate is called as depreciation so what neo classical say model says is that the user cost of capital is a very important determinant of how much this business fixed capital will be invested and user cost of capital is composed of three things one is the rate of interest second is the cost of the capital asset and third is the depreciation rate of this capital asset all these three together will determine the user cost of capital third are the tax rules that is many times many governments 
in order to incentivize business so that they invest more in business fixed capital, they give certain tax concessions for making these investments. So if tax rules are such that tax concessions are given when business is making investing in new types of capital assets, this encourages them to produce more or invest more. But the first two, that is the marginal product of capital and user cost of capital are the most important determinants of the business fixed capital. And according to the neoclassical model, the business will keep on investing till the time their marginal product of capital is more than the user cost of capital. In simple terms, it means if the business is earning more by investing extra fixed capital, they will, of course, keep on, will be encouraged to have greater business fixed capital. So, till the time the marginal product of capital is greater than the user cost of capital, then this business fixed capital will be encouraged or it will be, business will be definitely be willing to invest more. Second thing, type of investment, which we will be understanding is the residential investment, which is made by the households. As the name indicates, investment which is being made for the residence purposes. This is, as we are saying, it refers to that expenditure <coughs> which people make for constructing or buying houses or dwelling apartments. Why? Because either they want to live themselves or they want to rent it out to others. So, in simple terms, when we say real estate investment, is essentially what we mean by residential investment. So any type of expenditure which people are making either to construct their own houses or buying new houses or apartments is called as residential investment. Now this residential investment is distinguished from other assets because we know that housing has a longer life as compared to other assets. Why? Right? Because once you buy a house, a house has a very long life. Then also this investment of investment in housing in one year is only a very small percentage of the existing stock of houses. Because we have already said that houses have a very long life. If we see this residential investment, new residential investment, it the investment in residential housing stock will be a very small percentage of the existing stock of houses because house once made has a very long life. So new investment in residential houses are definitely a very small proportion of the total stock of housing which is available in the economy. When we talk about that, what are the factors which determine how much residential investment is made? We say it is dependent on the price of the existing housing units. That is, whether we will invest in new residence or not will depend on what is the current cost of those housing units which are already established. The price of these existing units would in turn be dependent on two things. One, what is the demand of housing units? And second, what is the supply of these existing units? Simple demand and supply equilibrium will determine the price of the existing housing units. The demand of housing units, we say, is downward sloping. That is, when the prices of these housing units are very high, when the, when the existing stock of houses is very high, prices are very high, uh, the demand for these houses will be less because it is very expensive to buy that residential property. Whereas, if the prices of the housing units is less, the demand would be more. Therefore, if we make the demand curve for the housing units, keeping price on the y-axis 
and the quantity of housing on the x axis we will see that the demand curve for the housing units is downward sloping Whereas, if we look at the supply of the existing unit, we say it is, in short run, it is fixed because you cannot build house in a very short period of time. Over a long period of time, we see house, housing structure building up, but you cannot build house in two days. It takes time to build a house. Therefore, in short run, the supply of the existing unit is fixed. Therefore, we see the supply curve to be a vertical straight line or the supply of the residential units in short run is inelastic whereas the demand curve we say is downward sloping. Now, further going into it, in long run, we have seen in short run ultimately the price of this demand of the housing units would be dependent on the demand only because supply cannot be changed. Whereas what happens in long run is that we can see new housing structures coming up. Therefore in long run the demand of the housing units would be dependent on the rate of population growth. If in a country we see more population growing, of course the demand of houses will increase because new more population would need more houses. Also, the tax policies also determine that how much would be the demand of housing. If we see that people get concession in their income tax, if they invest in real estate, if they take a housing loan, then people are encouraged to invest more in real estate or more in the residential purposes because they will get some benefit in their tax income tax because the government is relaxing that tax policy. Then income of the people is also a very important determinant of the demand for housing or for the residential investment because if our income increases we have a greater capacity to buy. So maybe instead of one house we might like to invest in another residence which we may like to let out some to somebody and earn rental income. So greater income would lead people to think of making more residential investment. And the last is the interest. If for example, if you are saying that you want to buy a house or invest in residential purpose and you many times most of the people would like to take a housing loan for that, greater rate of interest would discourage them to go for residential investment because it is a cost of that capital which you are going to borrow. Whereas a lower interest rate would encourage the residential investment because it would make your housing loan cheaper. So in long run the demand of house is de housing is dependent on what is the rate of population growth, what type of family structures we have, do we have a nuclear family, do we have a joint family. A greater uh, in society with more of nuclear families would require more houses, so more demand for housing will be there. Tax policy on the other hand would also encourage more residential investment if the government is giving you tax relief if you are investing in residences. Similarly, income is positively increasing your demand of housing because people will have a greater uh, you know, uh, ability to buy houses greater disposable income and interest which is essentially the cost of this uh, loans which you are going to take for the residential investment is also having an impact because greater in housing loan interest rate would discourage you to make residential investment and vice versa. Moving on to the third type of investment we have inventory investment. What is inventory? Inventory is basically the stocks of the unsold goods or the unused input materials which the companies have. We see this type of a stock when we see the balance sheet of the company we see the stocks are shown as an asset because they may be the stock of the finished goods which they have not sold as yet or it may be the stock of the raw materials. 
so when we talk about the gross investment when we did the first unit with you we talked about the gross investment so gross investment is the first business fixed investment which we have done now plus this inventory investment so inventory investment inventory is basically the stock of finished goods or the stock of the raw material which a company has unlike business fixed investment this inventory capital is generally has a very short life span because it is consumed for at a for your production purpose when inventory inventory decreases from one period to the next period we say inventory investment is negative that is if in this one period you are in you have an inventory of let us say 100 units in the next period you have inventory of 80 units we say your inventory investment is negative then inventory investment often occurs unintentionally the question arises in everybody's mind is that why do business keep this inventory inventory investment by business is essentially made because of three reasons one because businesses want to smooth out their level of production it's a very natural question which arises in everybody mind is why do we companies need this investment inventory investment one reason for keeping this inventory is because they want to smooth out their production process what happens is that the demand for their any good does not remain the same throughout the year there may be a busy season or there may be a slack season when the firms face slack season that is when the demand for goods is less what they do is they do not reduce their production immediately they keep their production at the similar level and use this production or use this finished good in those periods when the demand is high so instead of having a fluctuating production level they keep their production level smooth by utilizing the slack season for producing the goods for the busy season so one reason for keeping their investment inventory is smoothing their level of production second reason is that when the business buys these inventories in bulk that is they do not buy it frequently they buy their inputs in bulk it reduces their cost because instead of taking small small giving small orders for their input material if they buy it in bulk in wholesale they also get certain discounts and also reduces their transportation cost so instead of making small purchases the in companies buy their inputs in bulk which reduces their cost so that is the second reason for maintaining inventories and the third reason is that they do not want to run out of stock and disrupt their production process or disrupt their demand that is they want to keep enough stock with them to take care of any unforeseen increase in the demand for their product so they do not want to run out of stock what if a sudden demand is there and they are unable to fulfill the demand because there was zero stock available so they do not want to lose this opportunity of selling the goods when the demand increases therefore they keep this inventory so what we are essentially saying is that inventory investment occurs many times because they plan for a smooth production they want to reduce their cost by buying goods in bulk and they also want to do not want to run out of stock when investment demand is more let us now understand that what are the determinants of this investment the most important model which explains the inventory of raw materials and the goods is the accelerator model this model says that inventory investment is proportional to the change in output that is if the business firms are seeing a change in output how much is the change in output will determine how much inventory will they keep 
So some proportion of the change in output, they will always keep as inventory. Second determinant of the inventory is the real interest rates. Why? Because if you are blocking money in your inventory as stock of finished goods or stock of the raw material, some money is getting invested there. If the rate of interest of borrowing that money for the purpose of keeping in this inventory is very high, this will have a impact, negative impact on your inventory investment because you will have to pay a very high cost of, capital, of that particular working capital loan which you have taken. Whereas, if the interest rates are less, you would like to utilize that money in making this inventory investment. So, as we said, higher interest rate increase the cost of holding inventories and therefore decrease your inventory investment. When the economy, see what happens is that the inventory will not always be the same. The amount of inventory investment will change with the business fluctuations. It is said that when the economy is booming, we will see the firms would hold more inventories because they hope that there will be greater demand and they do not want to run out of stock. Hence, inventory investment will increase. Whereas, when the demand is slackening, when we see a recession in the economy, this the demand will slacken. The firms would not be willing to make more inventory investment. Hence, we will see what is called as a negative inventory investment. That is, instead of investing, they will start disinvesting or they will not invest. By empirical research which people have done in US, it indicates that for every dollar increase in GDP, there is 0 0.20 of inventory investment. That is $1 increase in GDP. If there is a change in output of $1, we say $0.20 of inventory investment is made. That is what accelerator model has also said. That ultimately how much inventory will be invested in will depend on how much is the change in Y. So a change in GDP of $1 will lead you people, the business firm, for an inventory investment of 0 0.20. So what we have done today, learners, is we have understood that what is basically investment. We say investment is the, we are talking about spending only on the physical stock of capital. We are not talking about investment in the financial assets. Then we have understood what are the various types of investment, that is business fixed investment, residential investment and inventory investment. Thereafter, we have also understood that what are the various factors of the investment. And of course, in your unit 2, we have already understood that what is autonomous investment and induced investment. Here, we have talked about three different types of investment which are equally important. That is business fixed investment, residential investment and inventory investment. I hope you enjoyed learning today's lecture. Till then, we'll meet in the next lecture. Stay safe, stay happy.